Uh, it's another day and another chance for the BBC to broadcast its own stupidity. The corporation is about to face one of its most high-profile tribunals since it lost a gender pay dispute with Newswatch presenter Samira Ahmed in 2020. But because that alone isn't embarrassing enough for the BBC, they're going to court with someone... They're not going to court with someone credible. That would be ridiculous. No, they're going to war with Martine Croxall, the presenter who was taken off air for acting like she'd just won the lottery minutes after the news broke that Boris Johnson had pulled out of the race to become Prime Minister. Well, this is all very exciting, isn't it? Hello and welcome to our look ahead to what the papers will be bringing us tomorrow. Am I allowed to be this gleeful? Well, I am. Uh, well, you're not, actually, no. <laughs> the fleets of viewers who complain to Ofcom clearly think BBC impartiality is a joke. And by the sounds of it, so does Martine. Well, rather than keeping her head down, she's now amongst five female presenters suing for age discrimination, sex discrimination and unequal pay. She and other colleagues were told to reapply for a small pool of chief presenter roles after it was announced that the corporation's home and world news channels would be merged in April of last year. They claim they were unfairly selected for redundancy and declined voluntary redundancies and for a time were left without job titles. But as the presenters were all due to return, they all continue to receive their full pay package. Well, her work woes don't seem to have stopped her enjoying her time off. She seems to have had a pretty gleeful year out, smiling away around the world, skiing in Bulgaria, feeding elephants in Thailand and taking hot air balloon rides, presumably fueled by her own unlimited supply of hot air. Well, good luck getting anyone to take you seriously, Martine, because you're going to need it. <laughs> now let's bring uh, the panel back in. Sam is back. Samantha is back as well. And you don't have a name that begins with S A M, unfortunately. I, I don't. Isn't that uh, awful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can, if you wish, do your little I... thing. Andrew Eborn is here. Are we going to get it? There you go. Pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that was that was like Sharon Smith's uh, show <laughs> on the West End. I could be the Sam Smith because yeah. you've got Samantha Smith. We? We've got to get okay, confused people. You're exactly a minority right. in here. For I, I am a minority. Um, Actually, white male is minority. It's true. <laughs> a, a white heterosexual male, whatever. Next on tap. Yeah, I did. That's what you say. And I did. I did. Bleach, I did bleach my hair in the pandemic and and uh, put put on a little poundage and. Oh, and my partner did say you're looking a bit Sam. Smith. Oh, it's yeah. I, I dyed my hair grey especially to to make it sort of diverse enough. So and it makes you look so intelligent. Thank you. That's, it's a whole oh, terribly deceptive. You guys just carry on chatting about yourself. <laughs> Something's happening on this show. I don't know. Oh, I mean, he starts asking Henry Bolton questions about migrants. <laughs> what? going, what's going on? Anyway, listen, Martine Croxall, uh, you said yes. you liked her. I, I think do. she made a complete fool of herself. But the great thing about the BBC is that these people, and she's been there, believe it or not, 30 plus years. Yes. She got her first job at the BBC yep. uh, as a work experience person. Uh, BBC Radio Leicester. Oh, and yeah. the problem that I have with people in the BBC is that's the only job they ever have. Mm. They go to the BBC sort of as a man and boy, or whatever it is, or girl, or non-binary individual, um, and then they just stay there for life. Mm. For years and years yeah. and but it's, years. I have to say, I've, been, I, I've worked for the BBC like, as, a, as a temp. Um, but like, I remember being... I've done shows at the BBC. I, I, remember, I, remember, I, remember, I, remember, I remember wishing that I was... There longer because there's because it's 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 auntie. Do you know what I mean? It's a it's an all encompassing mm. big kind of corporate. Hug. Yeah, but it shouldn't be though. So, it well, should it, be it, a commercial it, organization like it, everybody else. It should have been. I feel and I do, but I do feel bad for Martine because I think I think she is a good news good news reader. Oh, yeah, and, a, great, a, a great news. I know, what, what I love about her. Well, she did. I, I checked feel free to interrupt us, man, because they <laughs> like to just, you know these <laughs> mansplaining I'll, I'll types. Let him have his you know <laughs> Feel free to... Finish to... up, Andrew. <laughs> let Sam, <laughs> let Sam I feel, speak. I, no, but I, feel like I, I remember that. I was watching it just before we came in, and it was that gleeful moment. And she was giggling all about Boris Johnson when he just pulled out the, the leadership race when they were going to be doing the Sunday papers, I think it was. Yeah. And it worked on that sort of basis. Um, but also, I mean, a good friend of mine, Marianne, you remember the, the countdown thing that she did fairly recently? Oh, yeah. And these things go viral. Right. But, but the difficulty is this. So the, the last difficulty is this. Is they used to have two separate things doing news, didn't they? Mm. And they effectively merged it into one. And they basically said well, people have to reapply for the job. Yeah. The allegation is. The issue, the issue is with, with Martine's allegations is that, yes, as, as you've said, she was a fantastic newsreader, but the moment she stopped being a newsreader was the moment that she inserted herself into personal, partisan, political yeah. affairs. And, you know, her, her display on, on that nightly news programme was, I think, the beginning of the end for her. Right. Not because she was ageing, not because she had been there so not long, not because they were discriminating against her, but because her primary function as a newsreader had been undermined by yeah. no one but herself. Right. And there have been cases where, you know, female presenters, especially in the business, have been taken off air due to age. In Canada, there was a famous example recently of Lisa Laflamme, the, mm. C the CTV uh, anchor who was, who successfully, I believe, sued... Mm. Um, 
Bell Media for for age discrimination. But Martine here, I don't think there was any there's anyone that is really believing that she was taken off because 55 is too old. Yeah. I would have said she could easily look like she's in her early 40s. Yeah. The issue is that she undermined her own credibility and could not yes. be trusted to read the news when she displayed such a flagrant mm. disregard for the impartiality rules that yeah. we and other you know, talk TV, GB News, etc. are expected to abide uh, by. Yeah, Why exactly right. That? Yes, no, uh, Ofcom it... are always all over anyone who says something which they think they shouldn't have mm. said in the role that they particularly mm. got, yeah. particularly if it's at GB News or if it's here. Um, but at the BBC, you very rarely hear of, of anybody actually complaining about that. Well, because uh, because uh, here and here and GB News people f uh, presenters freely talk about their own their own thoughts and their yeah, but she wasn't presenter. Yeah, but she's yeah, but she's yeah, but they, well, this, that was, so, so, so what you're saying is that. Um, Talk TV and GB News is just it's just presenters, whereas whereas they they have well, to abide. So they have exactly it's a different, it's a different job. job. Exactly. That's but I don't remember, point. and you can correct me I if mean, I'm wrong. I don't remember Ofcom issuing any statement about what she did. Mm. No. Um, she was taken off air by the BBC. Exactly. Yes. Nevertheless, though, if that had been somewhere I mean, like this, if yeah. you look at Channel Four, do you remember yeah. uh, Krishna Murthy, I believe it was yeah. that yeah. that called uh, a senior Tory MPs a see you next right. Tuesday on air. Right. Yes. And yet he was allowed to return to and his look job at, after look at, after. Um, after a, uh, uh, didn't mean to say hunt. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I'm well, sure, the BBC sure. all do that. Sure. They, yes. I mean, there's but a, there's, there's a tape job. of them all doing it. Now, yeah. I've said Jeremy Hunt many times, yes. but I've never called him the wrong word. Mm -hmm. no. But mm -hmm. they do it, I'm sure, absolutely deliberately. But and they wouldn't do it to a, to a Labour Party. Sure. Members, and they, 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 they wouldn't Tory. face the sort of repercussions that and if all, you had, that if you had done that, you right. would be you would be off on, on, on well, the Well, look at Nick side. Robinson. Nick Robinson this week on the Today programme, yes. uh, interviewing David Cameron, refers to um, Israel murdering mm. innocent no, 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 civilians in Palestine. Right and you go, sorry? And he issued this very mealy-mouthed apology mm. in which he said he should have been clearer mm. in the words that he used. Yeah. Clearly anti-Semitic, what he said. They're not Murdering Thanks. civilians. No, I, and, and it's absolutely right to call it that. I, I think it's important to point out that this case is not about the gleeful comment. No, that, it's that not. Some, no. But, it's but all everything's about related. Yeah, but everything's it's, it's, related. And I think that this is the issue that, you know, the, the case that's being brought is a very legitimate one, and there are real issues with sexism in the mainstream media and the way mm. that women are uh, seem, to, seem to have a shorter shelf life mm. as broadcasters or presenters than their male counterparts. But Martine is not the person to be spearheading right. this, considering that she has her own... Mm. Scandals surrounding her her time as a as a news yeah. reader that have I would say muddied the water also, of her ability to claim sorry, age discrimination. I was going to say, but she's she is correct in in the fact that men end up being on television until mm -hmm. until they decide to go in their seventies or what or whatever. Mm. Whereas whereas Which women, is whereas, wrong. whereas again whereas whereas yesterday. women, for example, like you, you only need to look at Strictly with you know with yes. Bruce with Brucey knocking eighty yeah. and and obviously and obviously Tess like in her in her thirties right. or forties whatever. So it is there is there is sexism rife. So I do understand, but I but obviously with you know with the joking and laughing about Boris, that's a different thing. Right? But also the thing about this issue is that you know they do in, in in all sorts of media businesses slim down, expand. Yes. You know they seem to they have to cut their cloth accordingly. Mm. Yeah. She's been there as I say more than thirty years. She was yeah. probably offered a pretty good redundancy deal, better than anybody would get offered from a commercial company. Mm. She turned it down, and now she's complaining that she got sidelined. Yeah. Yet she's been on full pay, as you say, tramping yeah. around the world, having a very nice time. I don't really care, but it's our money at the end yeah. of the day. Mm. You know, and there isn't I don't think any other job that you can have in any other media organisation like that. Yeah. Because when you're in with the BBC, you're in with the furniture. Yeah. They just don't, you know, they don't get rid of people. Well, that's and, and all the information is going to come out. I think the trial starts on the first of May. Yes. So all of this will come out on, on, on that sort of basis. But it's also the, the question is they were saying they asked to apply for a job. Yeah. And what the the allegation, which again will come out, is, uh, whether it's true or not, the allegation was they'd already decided which presenters they were going to have. So right. getting people to do the dance. Yeah, but and it happens all the job. time. Of course yeah. it does. I mean, and, I've done many redundancy exercises in yes. my career at the, the newspaper built businesses. And you, and you, you know, you have a certain number. Management says you've got to lose this number of people. Yes. If they don't, if enough of them don't volunteer, you're going to have to figure out. Yeah. Who are you going to get rid of? And, and, and I always say it's really important. And you don't want to be left with all the, the, the no, dregs. No, no, exactly. But I, I, I always think it's important that people should be treated with respect. Mm. So I whatever they do, I disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been the downfall of this nation. <laughs> Treating people with respect is a very I, bad I, idea. I have to say, it's that gone that too far. Within, within our nation, you only need to look over to American politics right now with, mm. the, with the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene, et cetera. They, they have lost civility, and which is something that we do have still. Like, never. Even, even, I won't yeah, even, but even, I think we've gone the same no, way. No, I, we, I we have the public I don't space. Think, I don't think yeah. it may be in the public space in places yeah. like Twitter. I'm literally writing an article about this at the moment. But like, if you look at um, PMQs, for example, yeah. the 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 
there's still a kind of jovialness about it. There is, well, it's there is, there is, but there isn't this kind. There, it's, it's quite civilized. There isn't the yeah. it's, it's still civilized, is why. But, but you also need to fact check. So, so when uh, Keir Starmer was sort of saying oh, the billionaire Rishi Sunak, yes, and, of course. And somebody corrects. Well, he's not quite a billionaire right. unless you <laughs> add a lot. Uh, but like but Samantha says, and... it's Panto. It's yes. Panto. Oh no, it isn't. Where's your career? But also, you did you did see this week, didn't you? Wes Streeting and his fellow front bench Labour Party shadow cabinet members laughing at the possibility that people like Nigel Farage were being sort of locked up over in Brussels mm. for having what was supposedly a conference about, yeah. you know, right-wing views. Right, no, no, so no, I think no. it has shifted a little bit. But let's talk about Scotland, because there's a lot going on up there at the moment. Ah. Scotland ditches net zero. This is a great story. It's the first thing that I think you know, comes as useless has actually got right, <laughs> you know, because he's fine. <laughs> so the Scottish government, believe it or not, was the first government in the world to mm. set out the net it zero was, targets, yeah. right? And, of course, they famously had COP26, yep. where Alok Sharma burst into tears. Great whiskey, by the way, when you had that That was good on. whiskey, yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, <laughs> I, gave it to that my, I gave it to my son. How long um, did that last? So I think he still hasn't... I don't think he's finished it yet. Um, it's 800 quid's worth of whiskey. It was. Wow. Nice. Anyway, uh, they've apparently decided they're so useless at hitting the targets, yes. even though they've reduced... Because Britain has actually reduced its targets by 50%. Yes. In about 20 years. Yeah. Time. They're saying, now we can't hit the target, so we're just going to forget about it. Yeah. We're well, just I, not going to do net zero But they're, they're saying they're forgetting about the in immediate target. Yeah. But they, they still reckon they're going to hit it once by 2040 or 24, whatever it is. 2040 yeah, but they won't, the will they? I mean, we've seen, we saw something similar with the Labour Party and Keir Starmer yeah. essentially truncheoning mm. his, his, uh, billion, his billion pound, well, multi-billion pound, yeah. uh, net zero plan. goal. Exactly. Yeah. What, what we're seeing is the, the great net zero lie unravelling, right. which is that, you know, many, many... Governments and 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 politicians have used the the myth of net zero mm. to try and push through policies and plans that they would otherwise not have the right. support for. Because if you can put it under climate change and global warming right. and net zero, then people are more likely to push it through. I mean, look at Sadiq Khan and yeah. and the the uh, what essentially is punishing poor yeah. people for not having new enough cars. Right. That's what his whole ULEZ scheme is in 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 essence. Yes. But you know whether it's the Labour Party or Hamza Youssef in Scotland, what we're seeing is those who uh, utilise and, and exploited net zero and climate change to achieve their policy yeah. ends are now being told to pay the piper and being asked, well, where are, well, where's the progress? Well, because where it's is, an imaginary where is it? exactly, dreamed up exactly. sort of target anyway, right? Yes. And they've mm. also worked out that it hasn't worked. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. to be honest, if we had, as we have done, as we're told, we've reduced our global emissions by 50% in this country. Why hasn't it stopped all of the problems? Because and apparently it hasn't. It, well, it it's well, almost as though the climate well, is not affected by well, no, the climate. Yeah. The, clim the climate is obviously <laughs> uh, the climate problem is obviously huge, and it is, is it? and it, well, it isn't left and it isn't right. I mean, you only, <laughs> yeah, you but, only but you only need to look at Dubai this week and to, to see that. Like, do you know there why is, that there happens? Is, there in is, Dubai. But there is, but there is. Do you know what they do in Dubai? Do you know what well, they, they do? They um. They suit Cloud the clouds to get more rain, yeah. and they have yeah. no drainage. It, it, exactly. Well, they, so right? so they have, you have to and play with the weather. Like to, what you can do is go yeah. back to 1960 and see what the weather used to be like in Dubai then. Oh, no, you can't, the, because there was no so Dubai. Was chem, it, it, so you're saying it was right? chemtrails? The issue chemtrails. with... No, it's not chemtrails, but they seed the clouds they, because they yes. want more water. It, it was banned My daughter in, lives there. I know how Dubai UK. works. Exactly. They have no drainage whatsoever. And banned, they've had several yeah. incidents like this. This is like the worst yeah. one. But over the past mm. sort of several months, they've had terrible problems yeah. with drainage mm. because but, they mean, haven't built any. Talking I, about Dubai, talking about the, the Middle East and China and Russia, you know, the, the biggest issue with net zero and climate change, po change policies that I have and many others have is that you... You know, you can you can demonize ordinary people. You can push these mm. oppressive policies onto us in the West, in in America, in the UK, in France, and Germany. But the issue is that no matter how much we reduce our our carbon emissions and our net zero, our, our carbon footprint, as long as China, yes, the Middle You're East, right. and the Russia main, are continuing difference. to create. 70, 80, yeah. 90, 100 percent times larger emissions than we than we've ever put out. China's, then argue, China's going to argument change. is that they are 30, 30 years in the past. So they China's argument <laughs> is, they, is they still yeah, they're they're lying, still, they still have like decades they're, to, they're to do absolute to, confidence, to, aren't of, they? of course, China yeah, of course, is yeah. selling everything that they make to the rest yes. of the world, yeah. right? We have got idiots in this country who think that we've somehow passed on our climate emissions to them just because <laughs> they're killing our manufacturing. Colonialism business. in it's that. It's like, yeah. exactly right. Yeah. And I mean, they are 
far advanced of anything that we do yeah. mm. in their economy. So the idea that they should have special dispensation to have more coal-fired yeah, yeah, power stations... You're, you're absolutely absolutely but, say, but saying that they're not doing it so we don't have to do it isn't... Nobody isn't, has isn't to really do it. it. But, look, but, uh, eventually, but climate <laughs> change is... But this is the independent is, Republic of Mike Graham. Yeah. What he says that, goes. Yeah. But, no it is a, but it is a real thing. <laughs> and it, no it, it is a real thing and it, will, yes. and it will affect. And it, we, have, we all do agree, Shuri, that climate change is a real thing and that the human beings... And our place... Yeah, Our right. place on this planet is destructive. And, and the independent republic of Mike Graham is true. That's, I don't think you can prove that right. at all. Yeah. There's no evidence whatsoever that our place on this planet is destructive. Well you, planet... only, well, you only need to look at the graphs since, since, since yeah, the Industrial the graphs, Revolution. The graphs, right? yeah. the graphs are all models, right? The graphs are all models. They were not measuring these things for more than about 200 years. Mm. Yes, they can go back and, and go into the ground and, and stick, you know, poles into volcanoes to see what used to happen. But at the end of the day, we have been alive on this planet for a tiny, minuscule yeah. amount of the time that the planet's mm. been alive. Mm. Exactly. The idea that we're so arrogant that we think we can kill it all off of just because we we're driving that... around in <laughs> diesel cars is nonsensical. I think that the, nonsensical. I think that the, the issue that many people, again, have isn't... You know, the majority of people who, who don't believe in the climate change and net zero targets aren't climate deniers. They aren't, you know, yeah. they aren't right-wing extremists. They're, exactly. Yeah. They are ordinary people who want to put food on the table, keep a roof over their heads, send their kids to a good school and, and go to work nine to five, Monday to Friday and live a decent life. Yeah. And for politicians in their ivory towers to be essentially penalising and punishing ordinary people for the decisions and the mistakes that they have made yeah. is... Well, that, well, that is the point. I think that's the point with. Um, well, exactly. That's the point. And we're um, up to COP twenty nine now. Well, yeah, we've had twenty nine of them. I think, and well, nothing that, has changed. Agreed. But I think that's the point with um, with Scotland. You know, you know, reneging, etc. On what they said they were going to do. The cost of living crisis has overtaken every, everything else. So, no. the, so people, so people, so people see, so people see climate change problems as nothing to do. I don't, I don't see not, it. And I, and I need, I need, to pay, ask, I need to pay for my groceries. Exactly. And if you ask people about climate change, they'll give you a very nice virtue signaling. Answer. Yeah, but as soon as you say, would you mind giving me an extra ten quid yeah. uh, to pay for it? They don't want to. It, it's, it's absolutely right. You work on that, sort of and politicians are in the business of getting re-elected. So it's yes, great to give somebody yeah. else a target. Say, yeah. oh, we're, we're, we're going to stop it now, but by 2040, and they, they would have all long gone. And although I still hope that you'll still, still be showing that brilliant video. Yeah, we of will. Hamza. <laughs> of Hamza, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he may not be in power by that stage, but <laughs> no, I mean, no, certainly no, what I can tell telling. you, what I can tell you is that they've already got plans for the Azerbaijan right. COP29. Yes. Um, which is going to be taking place in November. And they've also got plans for COP30. Yes. So 29 won't be the end of it. Yeah. 30 so in let's, Brazil. Let's be clear, so it's they it's a fair COP. Yeah. You've got to keep going. They haven't scrapped Get your net planes zero. ready. Yeah, they haven't right. scrapped net zero. They've given themselves more time to be able yeah. to enact even more policies on people that will have far-reaching consequences. Yeah. They're, they're, just, they're just extending their it's own It's like that old Henny Youngman it. joke, who you'll know, but yes. you guys are probably too young to know. He was a very funny American comedian. He said, um, you hear about the guy who had a terminal illness. The doctor gave him six months uh, to live. He said six months later, still alive, give him another six months so he can pay the bill. And that's, <laughs> you know, that's the, what it is. Let's it's talk true. about um, working from home. Yes. Um, because Dowell is probably in favour of that as well. <laughs> um, John Donahoe, who is the yes. head of Nike, has complained that actually their whole company's profits have yeah. now been damaged. Uh, of course. Finally, somebody's admitted it. Because everyone's working from home. And, and First think, sales slump in two years. Absolutely. And you're not going to use your trainers. And I'm surprised, actually, the statistics of people wearing trousers. Uh, same sort of thing. When you had your Zoom thing, you didn't need to wear anything underneath uh, working on that sort of basis. I'm not being funny, but surely if, you're, surely if you're working from home, you're pretty much wearing your Nike, your Nike trainers. And you go, no, out, go, out, go no, out for a run at well, lunchtime, no, as, you're more likely, yeah, but as Andrew surely. says, no, you're not going out for a run. And no, you're not stimulated by exactly. the economy. You're just lying there in your pyjamas. <laughs> <doing> as, <laughs> as possible. And one of the reasons that he's saying that they haven't had as much innovation. It's not just because people are working from home um, and, and not sort of buying more shoes. Yeah. It's just that the, the creative process so you which goes on. Nike are the problem. Yeah. Is that yes, because they've been working from home. And so yeah. the fact is they've yes. not been as creative because when you're not mixing in a, in a, in a work environment, yeah. you don't come up with the ideas. Yeah. You don't sit yeah. in, in coffee rooms and sit yeah. in meeting rooms and actually come up with, with stuff that you should be doing. And I'm surprised they didn't actually blame Sunak uh, because of wearing trainers and things like that. Well, that was Adidas. Wasn't it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> they were Adidas. <laughs> exactly. Did, did Sunak apologise? I was, I was at a friend's house who, who is a fashion influencer the other yes. day. She was like, oh, my shoes are ruined now. <laughs> 
I don't <laughs> ruined, I can't wear them. I can't imagine why so many people suddenly pick on one thing and then they all have to wear it. I, I don't, I don't that. understand oh, no, that. That's what happens. It's called like, fashion. It's no, like it's not. It's, it's like called the being complete sheep. <laughs> no, but people are sheep. This is why influencers. And I, I understand there's a conference going down on in in Devon in the no, few days. It isn't. <laughs> it's true. And they have to do that because you don't want to feel this missing out. It's that. Yeah, but fear it's ridiculous. It's the same as the. You're not really missing out if you've got different trainers, surely. It's the same as the catalogues of the 1960s to hark back to your to your generation. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the Gretan you know, trends have always been a have always been a thing, but with social media and and with the the rise of TikTok and Instagram mm. and all of these inf micro influencers who are all trying to push their products onto you in a, yeah. and a further by an algorithm, we oh, are yeah. seeing a, a a trend towards you know this this toxic inclus mm. inclusion uh, mindset. But when it comes to the Nike story, I would say as a young person, as someone who is you know, many of my friends are uh, starting out as, as graduates now mm. in the workforce. They're working in the city or they're working yeah. in Manchester or wherever. I think that the pandemic and the work from home mentality has been one of the most damaging Terrible. things for Absolutely. young people's mm. work. I've been saying it for years. To, uh, to have ever come out, yeah. of, out of 2020. Mm. For, you know, you look at Canary Wharf, for example, the yeah. financial and legal yeah. hub of the United yeah. Kingdom. Most major law firms and financial firms are having to move out right. of the city. You have to move out into cheaper, smaller yeah. areas because they just cannot get bums on seats. But also, and, right. But also and with young people, um, like you, like you said, like I was I was with a bunch of influencers recently, and they were, were younger, but they couldn't. Were they wearing they, trainers? But they couldn't. <laughs> no, but they couldn't string a sentence together with <laughs> for one on one on right. one. They're yeah. used to doing. Right. They're used to interacting with their yeah, phones, but, the but not interacting with right. a human being. Exactly. And that, 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 will kill, that will kill off the human race. I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. And we you'll need end up growing good. a third opposable thumb. Or something <laughs> so you can but, text quicker. But, but, but I love that. It's like people say in signs and in, in a restaurant, there was somebody with their, their little daughter, and they and they did this and. The, the daughter turned to the father and said, well, why, what, what does that mean? Yeah. Because obviously people don't do that anymore. I'm going to say one more story before we go. Yes. It sort of um, tickled me earlier on. This is Joe Biden. He's, uh, he's famous for telling stories that aren't particularly true, right? Um, because he gets mixed up. But apparently he was down in a place called Scranton, Pennsylvania, visiting hey. a, a war memorial. And there was a lot of names, you know, from the Second World War. And his uncle, apparently, uh, was a guy who was a second lieutenant, Ambrose J. Finnegan, um, who was lost over New Guinea, yes. Papua New Guinea, during the Second World War. He flew single-engine planes. They never found him. They found his plane. And do you know what he said, Joe Biden? Oh, this is going to amaze you. I hope it will, anyway. He says that he believes that he may have been eaten by cannibals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Well, this is the leader of the free world. I well, love it. Right? But I think... I think Steak and pig me, absolutely. Right. And also, if we <laughs> compare that to the things that Trump has said, who, that, who says he's Jesus and, you know, when he's Nelson Mandela, I think... Well, like, he's never said they, that any of his relatives is, are eaten by cannibals. But again, <laughs> but, again, this, but again, this is one thing that I will say about this country. We would not stand. We would not stand for our, for our two main candidates to be in their 80s. That wouldn't work. Near 70s. It wouldn't work over here. It's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. It would never happen in this country. That's why they get stuck in the Lords. Well, yeah. Yeah, they, they can marinate over <laughs> Although, there. Although, you know, I do remember I, a time, I think you might remember this, yes. country, when Anne Whitt did Anne Whittacombe not suggest that one of her relatives had been eaten by cannibals? Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> in Papua New Guinea. Not she had eaten them, that's why. Like that sort of but I, I do think it's interesting. If this were, you know, where Joe Biden made this comment, we're all having a giggle about it. It's very, yes. very funny, you know, an old, an old man telling a silly story. But on the flip side of it, and this is what you're talking about when mm. it comes to the, the deep divisions within American society and even mm. British yeah. to an extent, mm. if this conversation had been happening about Trump yeah. on a left-wing broadcaster, they, they would, racist, they would yes. have been branding I'm him sure. racist, they would have been calling for him to, to be castrated and hung up uh, uh, on the you know, the temple yeah. of of, um, of George Washington or Labour Hamilton statue. Exactly. <laughs> yes. but, yes. but Another I... one. And his popularity <laughs> would go through the roof again. Exactly. The but... more you throw at him... The, 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 but the it's yeah. interesting to see the dichotomy of how left-wing totally. political figures and right-wing yeah. political figures are treated within yeah. today's society. Absolutely right. And the same you, you know, can say about Liz Truss. You know, she got treated in a way that I don't think any left-wing mm. politician would have treated. No, That's another exactly. story. Um,